Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Detective Ridiculous, where we go over the only thing more frightening than Warhammer real life. But if you want to check out this podcast and all of its great goodies down at patreon.com slash Adeptus Ridiculous, support us, join the Discord, discuss the episodes, get the posters, and everything in between, we would thoroughly appreciate it. And also, if you want to pick up any merchandise, Orchidate.com, check out the link in the description. We got all kinds of great stuff to go along with it, but I'm going to stop right now because we have an ad for this sponsor, Roll It Shy. Hi, everybody. This episode of Detective Ridiculous is sponsored by uh, Raycon Everyday Earbuds, a fantastic, affordable, and might I say, quality option for earbuds for you. These earbuds I keep in my backpack at all times. And this is Bricky sponsorship, you gotta say these things type stuff. No, 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 like genuinely, honestly, I keep these in my backpack at all times. I always find a reason to take them out. I'm always happy that I brought them with me. I use them on a train ride going to San Diego. I use them on a flight going to uh, Portland. I, I use them Often, they are an excellent and affordable solution. They have great battery life. They sound fantastic. Everyday earbuds by Raycon are a fantastic choice. They start at half the price of other premium earbuds. They have eight hours of continuous battery life or 32 total. And not just that, but they also have seamlessly easy Bluetooth pairing. And if you would like to get some for yourself, you can go down in the description and go to buyraycon.com slash adric to get 15% off your your order. Buyraycon.com slash adric 15% off description and thank you Raycon for sponsoring this video. Hell yeah brother. Hell, hell yeah. yeah brother. Hell yeah. So based on the hell yeah brother I'm assuming this is a very special Detective Ridiculous on Hulk Hogan? No. Uh, there's a ooh, much, no. macho you, man. You know we probably could do a Detective Ridiculous <laughs> on Hulk Hogan <laughs> we, we very probably could. easily. Honestly, we we probably could do a detective ridiculous on all the wacky shenanigans that happened in the eighties. Yeah, uh, Marty Jannetty may have actually murdered someone. Sure, yeah, that happened. Allegedly. 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 But I guess we should probably get into what we're actually doing today, huh? Instead of, you know, trying to do future stuff. All right. So how long is this episode going to be? DK three hours, four hours. Uh, you know, I'll 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 mention that in a, in a second because you know we we do have a bit of a wild episode of Detec- Detective Ridiculous today. Um, might seem kind of simple and straightforward, you know, when I start talking about it, but this is gonna kind of quickly unravel into some really weird and kind of wild speculations and theories. So we're not doing cryptids. It's not wartime shenanigans, and we're not doing wacky escapes from infamous prisons. We are going back into the territory of the mysterious and unknown with another disappearance. Okay, these are fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, today, we're going to be doing the disappearance of the Jameson family. Uh, and the reason I sort of vaguely uh, dodged over your how long is this going to be uh, is because... In the script, I'm like, okay, look, Shy, I promise I'm going to do my best to make this one relatively short by Detective Ridiculous standards anyway. So, it, you know, we'll, we'll, I'm looking, maybe an hour, maybe, maybe less. Maybe an hour. May, I, I'm thinking probably less, but eh, we'll see how it goes. Good right? God. We'll see, we'll see how it goes. We'll, we'll see. So. Let's get right into the Jameson family and who they are exactly. Uh, I'll try not to do a total autobiography of their life or anything. So the Jameson family consists of three people. 44-year-old husband Bobby Dale Jameson, uh, his wife, 40-year-old Sherilyn, uh, and their six-year-old daughter, Madison. Uh, They also had a cute little black and white fluffy dog named Maisie. This is the most important part of the thing so far. If anything happens to if anything happens to Maisie, I am leaving this episode. Uh well, hey, you know that we'll we'll find out. We'll find out. Uh, and if you needed a timeline for when this is happening, we are looking at around October of two thousand and nine. So it's a oh. little while ago. Well, I, I mean, most of our stuff took place in like the the thirties. Yeah. yeah. So so wait, this is actually wait. My, you tell me, DK. 
Mm -hmm. Knowing me, which Call of Duty came out in 2009? <laughs> oh, no. That's what you should tell me. I know. but You're can the you one that knows all of them. Can you guess? It was a big one. Uh, I, honestly, I, I, I don't even know. Modern Warfare I'll... 2. All right. Oh, okay. I... Also, Killing Floor <laughs> 1. Really? Yeah, that's Killing a fun Floor. Game. It's a great game. You can't even kill the floor. All right, go that's, ahead. Continue. That's the one where they paint over the blood with the regular map and then, like, whatever. Anyway, <clears throat> so uh, this little family of three and their cute little dog, Maisie, decide that they're going to move out of their current home in Eufaula, Oklahoma, which I didn't even know was a place until today. Uh, but <clears throat> when they decide that they're going to move, they decide that they're going to move to someplace really strange. So they literally owned this big old storage container. Like it was one of those crazy big ones where you could almost ship a car overseas in it. And they were going to move onto a 40 acre plot of land in a place called Red Oaks, Oklahoma. And they were going to move into the storage container. Why? They were going to live uh, you know, I, I, I don't know. Uh, Red Oaks is kind of in the middle of nowhere. It's kind of like that countryside type property where you're kind of alone and it's kind of like a foresty area, kind of out in wilderness. It's kind of like 30 miles away from Eufaula. And I don't know if they just wanted uh, the isolation. I don't know if they were trying to give their life a blank check moment where they could start all over again, or maybe they just wanted the peace and quiet of foresty wilderness area. But they decide we're moving into this big old storage container. Wait, roll, roll it back real quick. Red Oaks was in what state again? Oklahoma. O Still in Oklahoma. Okay, we are. Okay. Um... Okay, wait, so I'm, maybe I'm confused. Shy posted two pictures, one of a house, one of a storage container. I know they moved into the storage container, but was yeah. the house in, in like the front yard of the storage container? So that house is where they currently live. Oh, uh, they chose like, to move to yeah, the storage so, container. Yeah, they lived in this house in Eufaula, and then they were like, you know what? We're moving into a storage container out in the middle of nowhere. Oh, okay, I thought they had a storage i thought they like fell on hard times and like this person happened to own a storage container so we're gonna move in the backyard of this person's <laughs> house that contains the storage container now they 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 bought this storage container with the idea we're going to move out to the middle of nowhere and live in the storage container and leave all this behind whose idea was this it was probably a joint idea between the husband and the wife Wow, Red Oak population 2020, 537. Yeah, not a lot. Again, it's it's a little foresty area kind of out in the middle of nowhere. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's quite pretty, though. Yeah, yeah, it looks, I mean, it, it looks like a nice sort of nature-y area, so sure. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so they're in talks with a real estate agent who is fixing them up with all the little details and all the paperwork, and the agent wants to show them this plot of land that they found. But apparently, from what I've read and what I've seen, uh, the Jameson family were very specific in that they wanted to look at this plot of land in Red Oaks by themselves. They didn't want any escort. They didn't want the uh, real estate agent to show it to them. All they wanted were the GPS coordinates so they could go look at the area by themselves. So they're, they're buying a plot of land to place the storage container on. Mm hmm 40-acre plot of land in Red Oak so they can thunk this big old storage <laughs> container on and just live in it. 40 acres is a lot. 40 acres is a good chunk of land, yeah. I mean, they want to be alone and have lots of space on all sides of them. So got to walk 15 minutes to get off your own property from your storage <laughs> container. <laughs> get off my property. Give me half an hour. Oh, boy. So, on October 8th, the Jameson family, with their little dog, Maisie in tow, would pack up their truck and head out to Red Fowls to examine this potential new home for their family. And don't worry, Shy, we are going to circle back to the part about what they packed a little later, because it's important. But, uh, the Jameson family would never return from this trip. 
Wait, now, wait. That was that was it. <laughs> okay, look. That's like the quickest TLDR rundown of what happened. Like I said, it seems quick to the point. Seems like oh, you know what? They just they got lost in the woods or something, right? But we're going <laughs> we're gonna go down some twists and turns about what could have potentially happened to them. All right. Uh, oh no, I'm, I'm sure there there are definitely like like lots of theories and all that kind of stuff. But I'm just I want to make it very clear. They they never lived in the storage container. They just were going to, yes, and then and then didn't. Yes. Okay. All right. Is, <laughs> so it's a, it's it's a move. All right. It is one of the moves of all time. It, for yeah, sure. Yeah. All right. All right. Go ahead. So, uh, around October sixteenth, there would be a pretty massive breakthrough in this disappearance because obviously family and friends are like, "Oh my God, where are they?" Um, so the, they legit found the Madison family's truck abandoned in a place called Latimer County, Oklahoma, uh, where two hunters, I guess, just kind of stumbled on it. They were hunting and they were like, whoa, abandoned truck. Why is this here? Inside the truck, they found the family's dog, Maisie, still alive, barely. Let's, Um, oh. She, Maisie is still alive. Uh, Maisie is malnourished. Maisie is clinging to what little life it had left. And most sources said, uh, most sources made this very clear, that Maisie was so desperate and so close to death that it was literally eating its own feces in order to survive. All right. Well, this this is this is the monkey paw. I got I got a, I got the dog that survived, but I got the horrible truth of it all. Yeah, but hey, Maisie survived the whole ordeal. Maisie is apparently still doing fine. I think. Uh, the other bizarre thing was that most of the family's belongings were still in the car too, like uh, ID cards, wallets, jackets, phones, uh, Sherry Lynn's purse, their GPS device, prescriptions, like really essential stuff that you wouldn't just leave behind unless you figured you were coming back relatively soon. Uh, they also found a bag that had 32 thousand dollars in cash uh, which i think was like hidden under the front seat uh the assumption going around is that they were going to use this money uh to buy the 40 acres of land or at least like put like a a down payment on it or something in Um, in all cash when people say like when people say pay with cash for that kind of stuff they don't normally actually mean pay with cash yeah uh the other thing is that this thirty two thousand dollars was in a ziploc bag that was also in a bank bag which i don't think is standard practice when buying land or that's extremely anything. sus yeah i don't yeah that that's it's a little weird that it was like that but whatever i guess Uh, There were also basically no signs that the car had been run off the road. There were no broken windows, nothing was damaged, so the chances that someone maliciously forced them off the road is kind of unlikely. Uh, I know some sources said that the police considered that they were like, uh, they they saw someone that they knew, they saw someone that they were friendly with, and they just kind of willingly stopped the truck, everybody got out, and oh, let's talk with our buddy, and oh yeah, we'll go have a chit chat with them, and then we'll come right back to the truck, and that's why they left all their stuff there, maybe. Um, Only problem is, uh, there was a witness that saw them in the area Uh, that day. Uh, Some guy that lives in the mountains, his house wasn't that far from where they found the truck. Uh, According to him, he saw and maybe chatted with the Madison family, but after he saw them get in their truck and leave, he didn't see anyone on the road after them. Uh, Granted, it's not like he could keep 24-7 surveillance on the road, but according to him, nobody else was on the road that day. And if that's the case, who forced them off the road? Who, who who made them stop? Was it someone that was, like, living in the area? Was it someone that was waiting for them in the woods? Who stopped them? That uh, that picture up there looks like that scene out of No Country for Old Men when he finds the money. Oh, yeah, totally does. And he's on, like, the ridge watching them. Yeah, for, like, a really oh, long yeah, time. yeah, totally does. Yeah, 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 yeah. Goddamn. Mm. 
But anyway, so now that their truck had been found with basically all of their possessions in it, uh, authorities began to sweep the area, obviously looking for the Jameson family and trying to figure out what what happened. Um, the police also used the GPS that they found to sort of figure out where the Madison family had been before this, uh, you know, to see if there were any clues left in spots that they had stopped before. And with the data from the GPS, they realized the family had stopped at like this hill around 15 miles or so back from where the truck was found. So police head to this area and they actually find footprints. I think a couple sources specifically said they were small footprints. So the assumption is, oh my God, those are Madison's footprints. A uh, little bit of a side note here. <clears throat> uh, on the phone, on one of the phones that they found, they actually found a picture of Madison that was recently taking, taken uh, on this hill. Uh, I don't know exactly how to describe the emotion on her face, uh, because, like, depending on how you look at the case, you could argue that Madison is either laughing or crying in this picture. Um, obviously, they only found the phone, so there's no context to the picture. Um, so if you think that something malicious happened to her, it's like, oh my god, she's obviously crying and she's obviously in distress. But if you're like, oh, nothing happened to her, it's like, well, she kind of sort of looks like she's maybe laughing. I um, I can't tell. I honestly I, I give it no credence to any side because kids make stupid faces all the time. And that's fair. Just like just any face can mean anything at any point in time. So like you know what? Fair enough. She's, she's a alive. That's that's what that's what I care about at this point yeah. in time. Um I mean to me the picture looks like she's kind of distressed, but like you said, it's it's a kid making a face. Um, she she looks like she looks like she's being told to look at like something in the sun. Yeah. Like, she's just like, ah. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, I think it was Sherilyn's mother. It was Sherilyn or Bobby Dale's mother that said in an interview or something uh, that she thought Madison was actually crying in that picture uh, because she believed that whoever took that picture uh, was not Sherilyn or was not Bobby Dale. Because apparently, in her opinion, uh, Madison would never look at her parents like that if they were taking a picture of her. So, mother is thinking that's a little that's a little strange. So, naturally, thinking that the family had to be somewhere in this area because they've got the picture of the hilly area, they've got the the footprints and everything. Uh, on October seventeenth, a massive search would be undertaken for the Madison family. Uh, the lead on this investigation was a man named Israel Beauchamp. I hope I'm not butchering that. Uh, he was the sheriff of Latimer County, and he said in an interview that at the time, they had one of the largest search parties in Oklahoma's history with over a thousand volunteers, more than 13 dog teams. They had planes, they had UAVs, and they even had helicopters all just combing this area looking for the Madison family. But I nothing mean, ever turned up. That's pretty cool of them, at least. Yeah, they... This was a big ol' search. They had, like, everybody looking for them. But nothing ever turned up. They never found him. They found nothing. So, uh, Israel and the authorities needed to take a closer look at the Jameson family. Maybe if they looked into their background and their history, they could find something to help this all make sense. And one of the first things that they came to realize was that the marriage between Bobby Dale and Sherilyn wasn't going super well. Uh, because one of the other things they found in the truck, which I conveniently left out, uh, were these, like, really weird and disturbing letters that Sherilyn wrote. Uh, it was like a list of things that she literally hated about her husband, how she wanted a divorce, how she thought he was a lazy hermit, and how death seemed to follow and hover over their family like a cloud and just really weird shit like that uh, and she goes on for like 11 pages with stuff like this um, well you know it makes me feel like that wait 
Oh. We didn't figure out who we didn't figure out who specifically wanted to move into the container, right? Mm, it's true. We didn't figure out who ah. specifically did. I I'm pretty sure they both jointly wanted to, but that's true. I I or if we did, I don't remember what source said. So uh, there was also another really weird line from these letters that basically had Sherilyn saying uh, she would hate it if their daughter had to be taken into foster care because Bobby Dale would be in prison for killing her. Which is a little ominous and a really weird thing to write out like that. Very, very strange thing to be worried about. It's giving me Gone Girl vibes. I never saw Gone Girl. Oh, the, the just, damn, you, okay. These letters are, 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 we'll talk about that more when we get the theories. Okay. Uh, and then you add to the fact that Bobby had been uh, recently injured in a pretty bad car accident. He couldn't work. Uh, he was on prescription drug pills for his back because, you know, he was he has a hard time getting around. He can't work. Um, they routinely had big fights and arguments over the family's money woes. And Bobby was in a pretty nasty legal battle with his ex-wife over the custody of two kids he had with her. Uh, to say that their marriage was in a tumultuous spot would be like the understatement of the decade. So, yeah. Uh, and at this point, it's really easy to think, well, you know, maybe the wife, <laughs> you know, these letters seem a little crazy. Maybe she, you know, uh, especially when you add to the fact that she was unfortunately diagnosed with being bipolar. Uh, she was being medicated for it. And so naturally, you have a lot, a lot of suspicion being cast on Sherilyn right now. I mean, when the letters were found, a lot of the speculation turned into, well, she probably killed her husband and child and turned the gun on herself. Um, but while, you know, there's some motive, you know, she kind of, she, she's obviously a little unstable. She's got really weird feelings toward uh, Bobby Dale. A lot of motivation for her to do something <laughs> wild. Uh, they both really really loved Madison, and by all accounts, they were just amazingly loving parents to her. Uh, even Bobby's mother seemed to think that despite all of these problems, they were both amazing parents to Madison, and there is no way, shape, or form that they would ever let any harm come to her, no matter how much they argued, no matter how much they fought, even if they had zero dollars, even if they were divorced, they would never let anything happen to her. Like the mother full on believes someone must have forced them out of the car and done something to them because Bobby and Sherilyn would never, ever, ever, ever let any harm come to their daughter, let alone being the cause so, even if Sherilyn was so frustrated with Bobby that she decided to do something about it on this trip, like say the mother's wrong and she's like, oh yeah, I'm, damn it, Bobby, uh, why, why would she bring Madison and the dog along? You're really, you're really going really to hit us with the damn it, Bobby combination it, Bobby. for this one? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm surprised I haven't done it so far. God damn it. But anyway, yeah, uh, like like I said, all of her family is saying nothing would ever make her hurt Madison. So uh, I don't know. I feel according to the family, there's no way Sherilyn like did something crazy here. So uh, the investigators would go back to the Jamisons home and they would actually find security camera footage from their house, because of course they had a security camera set up all around their house. And they found footage of the day the family left on their little trip. And their behavior when they're packing up their truck is really, really odd. Uh, according to the lead investigator, again, Israel Beauchamp, in the footage, Bobby and Sherilyn took a really, really long time to actually load the car. Uh, and apparently they could be seen putting stuff into the car, then taking stuff out of the car, and then putting stuff back in the car and taking it back to the house for no reason. Uh, there are moments where they kind of just stop and stare into space for absolutely no reason 
before, you know, just casually getting back to it like nothing's wrong. Uh, they also changed their clothes several times while they were packing up the truck for apparently no real reason. Uh, the other bizarre part is that Sherilyn and Bobby Dale literally never interacted with each other a single time while they were packing the truck. Uh, most sources I've seen have been like, yeah, they looked like they were in a crazy trance and that they didn't even realize the other person was there. Uh, and Israel would uh, take this footage and he would uh, he would hire a psychologist to have him sort of analyze their behavior, see if he could give them some insight into why they were acting so bizarre and weird. And apparently it did not take the psychologist long to just be like, yeah, that's drugs. They're on drugs. That's got to be drugs. Oh, would yeah, you, any particular... you can watch the CCTV footage of them packing up the truck, and it's weird. A- any particular type of drugs? Um, so, like, I only saw one interview with Israel Beauchamp where he where he said he did this, and all he said was, "Yeah, the psychologist thinks they were on drugs. They didn't say specifically which drugs, just that it's probably drugs." Wait, this video is what they gleam to be drugs mm-hmm. there this this video is like a like a frame a second how do you gleam anything from this oh well i don't know i i imagine israel had like more steady footage okay oh, the original's 20 minutes okay so there's okay this is not the exact one i thought someone had uploaded the exact one and okay okay i thought that well i i thought like i, I knew it was bad quality but like it could have like bad resolution i just thought it'd be higher frame rates so you can at least see the yeah, way yeah, they like, yeah, move oh yeah. uh, yeah. okay and uh, it's 2009 cctv so okay so yeah so full one isn't updated okay, okay fair enough oh that's true because the the cops probably wouldn't want the full one uploaded because yeah yeah uh, problem is, though, no illicit drugs were found in their home or in their truck. Uh, like I said, there were empty prescription bottles that they did find in the truck, but Sherilyn was diagnosed with bipolar disorder that she needed to medicate for, and Bobby Dale was taking pain medication for his back after his big car accident, so finding those pill bottles doesn't really mean that much. So... Mm. Uh, it's also been suggested by a few sources that it is not entirely impossible that meth was involved. Uh, because apparently, in that area of Oklahoma, Eufaula, um, meth actually is quite a big problem over there. And, like, Eufaula has a reputation of being kind of like, oh, there, there are some meth places around here where you could get meth from. Uh, Some have even speculated that maybe that's why they were so hell-bent on taking this huge wad of cash out in the middle of nowhere, and the whole scoping out our new home was just a cover for a drug buy or something. But didn't they have $32,000 in cash? Yes, they did. They had $32,000 in cash. Like I can understand the the idea of of buying meth with cash, but I d- can't understand buying thirty two thousand dollars of meth with cash. I mean, addiction will make you do some crazy things, right? I, I could, I I don't know. Um, so I I have my doubts about that because let's let's say for the sake of argument, sure they were planning a drug buy, or maybe they were paying off some drug related debt or whatever uh if this is a drug related trip why are they taking the dog and madison with them why why are you bringing your kid and your dog to some sort of drug related thing i mean you might have just you might have just answered it right there do they have money for a sitter do they can they leave them somewhere else i mean addiction will do stuff to you leave, leave them with grandma Oh, you could leave them with grandma. That's yeah. actually a good point, yeah. Not only that, but if they were out there specifically to have some sort of drug deal, why didn't they take the money with them? Why'd they leave the money in the truck? It just was, it doesn't make any sense. Was their drug deal perhaps supposed to be at the... Hmm. 
Yeah, you wouldn't leave the bag of money in the truck if you were planning on, like, buying some drugs. And you wouldn't bring your dog and your kid. I don't think. I mean, <laughs> I've never I've never been on one of these buys, so I don't know what common practice is. Um, it, that's true. Like, how did they get that money to begin with if they're both on disability about to be living in the woods? Um, I mean, hmm. Were they? I'm assuming they didn't find any drug dens in their prior home or anything. No, I mean, like I said, they found no drugs. There was no drug. I mean, again, drugs were a problem in the Eufaula area, which is what led people to think that, hey, you know, meth could be involved. You know, it's not unheard of. You know what I mean? But like, it's not like they found white powder or it's not like they found broken up blue crystals in their basement or something hey hey hey, <laughs> hey. um but anyway uh it was also discovered that around six months before the family disappeared uh bobby dale got either a protective order or a restraining order for his 67 year old father bob dean jameson uh, and from what I've read, it seems like Bobby Dean, the father, had made several threats to literally kill his son's family. Uh, and it seems like his father, it seems like they had a really sort of like hate, hate relationship. Like they really hated each other. Um, because apparently early on in his life, uh, Bobby Dale worked at a gas station his father owned for free. Uh, with the promise that when he was older, he would either, like, he would get to own half of the gas station, or if he sold it, uh, he would get, like, a big chunk of the money from it. You know, you, you, you know, I'll eventually pay you off. Don't worry about it. But that never happened. And Bobby got none of the gas station, and he got none of the money from the gas station when I think his father sold it. And so, naturally, Bobby Jr., was a little miffed about this uh and he even he was even suing his father over it justifiably um also apparently at one point uh the father bobby senior hit bobby jr with his car on november 1st 2008 uh, this according to the petition that Bobby Jr. made for the protective order. There weren't any specifics on uh, why, how, or where it happened. Uh, it was just Bobby petitioning that, hey, I need this protective order because dad tried to hit me with his freaking car. Uh, and then in one of these petitions, or in the lawsuit against his father, uh, Bobby Jr. also suggested that his father was a man who thought he was above the law, and that his father was actually a, a hardened criminal that was dealing in meth, prostitutes, and gang-related activities. Uh, it should be noted, however, that the protective order was dismissed uh, on May 18, 2009, I couldn't find any specifics as to what made it get dismissed other than uh, the judge dismissed it after hearing testimony from those involved. That's it sounds like Bobby Sr. was a real piece of work. Oh, that's that's one way to put it. Sure. I would I was going to say he sounds like a giant piece of. Yeah, but anyway, sure. Yeah, absolutely. So naturally, the father is under some heavy heavy suspicion right now because it seems like he is so far the most likely candidate to make the Jameson family just mysteriously disappear. However, uh, Bobby Jr. had a brother named Jack who uh, kind of sort of puts the dad's suspicion to rest. Um, Jack came forward and said that, you know, certainly Bobby Jr. is right that our father was a disturbed individual for sure yeah i can't really argue that but he was actually in hospital or in like one of those nursing rest homes at the time the jameson family disappeared and like two months after the family disappeared the father actually died so there's really no way to know if the father had anything at all to do with it uh, How, what did I he die from just old age? I think it was just old age. Yeah, he was he was in he was in hospital. He was in a nursing home, and I think he just died of old age. Well, so, crap. 
Yeah, so there's there's no way to know if he actually did have anything to do with it. Like, you can't interview him. Nobody seems to know if he said anything to anybody. Um, there were a couple of online sources that implied that, you know, even though he was elderly and in bad health, if he really was involved in drugs and gang-related activities, well, it'd be super easy for him to, uh, hire some thugs, get some of his boys to do it for him. Hey, go take care of my nitwit son, you know what I mean? Um... But I, I think that's kind of that's kind of a big speculative leap uh, to assume that Grandpa put a hit out for his son's family from the nursing home. A uh, little bit of a stretch. I think that's a bit of a primed reach, right? God, you, you Warframe can't leave you. No, I can't. It, it no, just, it, it, it really can't. Part of me. It, it's it mm-hmm. sounds like a bit of a reach, personally. Also, I just don't. Maybe I'm I'm the weird one, but I just don't honestly look at at the 500 person rural Oklahoma as the kind of place that would be hit by a large contingent of mob related and hitman activities. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it might not be the mob; it's just gang related activities. It might not be the mob. Oh, and this is allegedly, 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 right? And uh, believe it or not, uh, those are the more plausible theories. Uh, we're going to get into some of the more downright outlandish theories now. Uh, One of the more out there theories is that the Jamesons were involved in spooky witchcraft and I guess like something paranormal got them, which is wild, I know, but, 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 uh, Bobby Dale did actually go to his pastor and confess that not only did his family think there were two ghosts living on his roof and threatening their mortal souls, but that they had bought a satanic Bible, which I didn't know you could do or even existed, uh, to try dealing with the ghosts on the roof. Uh, apparently, one of Sherilyn's friends said they bought it as a joke. We bought the Satanic Bible as a as a quirky little joke. It's just a prank, bro. Which is a super odd thing for God fearing Christians to buy as a gag gift. Because oh, by the way, yes, they were devout Christians too. And apparently, the pastor even claimed that the Jamesons were engaged in I kid you not spiritual warfare. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Small, it, mm, small, the small town religious a- a angle thing. I, yeah. <laughs> because Bobby had asked the pastor for silver or special bullets that could be used to drive away ghosts. Okay. Uh, well, I, we can skip that part. <laughs> uh, I also remember reading a source that said uh, apparently Madison was actually hearing and speaking with one of the ghosts. Even named it Emily. Named one of the ghosts Emily. Uh, Also, if you look on the shipping container that they were planning on living in, you'll notice that there's a lot of, like, graffiti sprayed on it. That wasn't done by vandals. That was actually done by Sherilyn. Uh, I guess she got it in her head that the neighbors were trying to, like, poison and kill her cats. So she graffitied on the side of this thing, three black cats killed to date by, that's B-U-Y, people in this area. Witches don't like their, that's T-H-E-R-E, witches don't like their black cat killed. So naturally, everyone thinks that Sherilyn is maybe dabbing in witchcraft and a wee bit of the old Satanism, because why else would you paint that on the side of what should be your house? Um, This theory actually also picked up some steam because Sherilyn's mother, uh, in an interview, said that she believed that they were on the hit list of a religious cult. Uh, She claimed that the area Bobby and Sherilyn lived in was kind of notorious for cults and things like that. But she wouldn't elaborate on which cult she thought was responsible for their disappearance. Okay, so so ironically, that part, I believe more 
So, so, so like all of the uh, all of the like oh they were they were a cult or like they, uh, yeah. they, these were an affront to God. Um, like the part of the devils killing them is obviously stupid, but yeah. the part of other other religious nut jobs believing it and killing them a lot higher of an option. Yeah, that actually that that is the probably the most believable part of that theory. Sure, I'll, I'll go with you on that. And while that theory may be hard to top, uh, what if I told you that some people legit thought it was the white supremacists that did it? How would you feel about that, Brie? How would you feel about going from ghosts to white supremacists? Aren't they white? Kind of the same, actually. This is kind of the same. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, so, look, I, I know, I, I get it. This theory is getting off to a rocky start already, but uh, there is one little nugget in here that I kind of want to touch on, and it doesn't really have anything to do with the whole supremacist thing. But anyway, uh, so the theory goes that at one point they had this sort of live-in handyman named Kenneth bellows guess he was sort of a family friend they'd always gotten along when they hired him for jobs and the idea of having a live-in handyman is hey that's pretty cool if anything breaks just hey kenneth go fix it um and it went all right but i guess while living with them uh kenneth found out that Sherilyn was actually of native american heritage and the jamesons well, they found out that Kenneth was a massive white supremacist piece of shit. Uh, apparently, uh, you know, they, they would just get into arguments and, and Kenneth would threaten them. And these threats and arguments between them got so out of control and Sherilyn felt so in danger that she literally had to use her twenty two caliber pistol to threaten him to get off their property, and leave. And apparently she even had to fire off a couple rounds at his feet to show that she was serious and to get him out of their house. And from what I've read on the matter, it seemed like a lot of people were just, oh, this is it. Oh, man, they're salivating at this information because it seems like the perfect fit. It must have been this crazy white supremacist that was driven out of, out of the home at gunpoint. But apparently the FBI investigated him, interviewed him, did the whole thing, and cleared him. His well, alibi checked out, and they determined that he couldn't have had anything to do with the disappearance. Well, I mean, we have in all of our Detective Ridiculous episodes, not once have the police been wrong. So <laughs> truly, I believe you. Yes, the in, in Detective Ridiculous history, never have we had a story where the police did something wrong, poor investigation skills. Never, never. They've always been just the, the cream. The oh shit. The cream. The cream. The yeah. cream. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Unjustifiably <laughs> in a position I'd rather not be not in. Be. <laughs> that being said. There are people that still hold to belief that it is entirely possible that while Kenneth might not have done it himself, what's to stop him from telling some of his <clears throat> friends about the family and how poorly they treated him and oh, blah, 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 and then they were the ones to do something shady. Completely speculative, there's no proof of this, but it's just, you know, theory. The well... A game theory. <laughs> a game theory. For future reference, the bit I wanted to talk about was the fact that Sherilyn owns a 22 caliber pistol, which will kind of sort of swing back to ish in a little bit. Anyway, all of these crazy theories were legit being investigated by Israel Beauchamp. Uh, like, he was so invested in this case. Um, and in an interview, he specifically said the reason he got so invested in this case and worked himself so hard on it was because at the time, he had a daughter that was just about the same age as Madison. And it just made it so personal for him. And, like, he wanted to see it through to the end. But nothing conclusive ever really sprouted up there were wild theories but none of them ever added up it was all it all felt like a wild goose chase despite how many leads he potentially had but 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 four years later on november 16th 2013 
just under three miles away from the car, a bunch of deer hunters would discover the partial skeletal remains of two adults and one child. This would be the final resting place of the Jameson family, lined up side by side next to each other. Side by side? Side by Uh, side next to each other, face down. Oh boy, any um, any fractures in the skull? Anything that you could tell? Perhaps a ballistic? Well, forensics confirmed that the remains did indeed belong to Bobby, Sherilyn, and Madison. But the cause of death could not be determined because of how long the bodies had been missing, all of the decomposition, uh, and, and damage that might have done by roaming animals that may have been, you know... Hungry. Of course. Um, There was, to answer your question, there was what looked like a hole in the back of one of the skulls. Just one. Specifically, Bobby Dale's. But Mm -hmm. it couldn't be confirmed that that was a bullet hole or if it was something that was possibly done by an animal or just general damage from the elements. Oof. Hmm. Yeah. So knowing this, speculations kind of start changing a little bit because some people thought that maybe, you know, it was a case of the family got lost in the woods and maybe they died of, like, hypothermia. But if that was the case, why would their remains be face down, lined up side by side? Did they realize they had hypothermia and just decided to sit there next to each other? Like, you know. Maybe I'm crazy here, but how... Thank you. Um, but how can you say that – how can you say that there's there's too many interference with animals and stuff like that for the remains, yet the bodies remain exactly the same, face first, side by side with each other? Like, if, if an animal screwed around with them or, or the elements, it would have moved them. True. Hadn't really thought about that, but that's a, that's a fair point. If like, the animals had messed around with them, they 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 would yeah. Well, okay, okay. So so how much how many more uh how many more hidden things do you have to to tell me uh, for theories? Uh, I mean, we're 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 coming up on on the close. We're we're we're, we're not too far away. All right. I I don't want to I don't want to go into full speculation mode yet. So so okay. we'll, we'll finish out all your sh- your uh, shenanigans. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. And uh, so, okay, so ladies, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I'm glad you caught that as quick as you did. All right, keep Thank going. <laughs> and then, what about the idea that this was perhaps a murder, mm, unaliving of yourself, uh, because of how unhappy Sherilyn was with Bobby? Uh, if that was the case, then why was Bobby's skull the only one that had a bullet hole in it? Uh, also, remember that twenty-two caliber pistol that Cheryl Lynn was apparently known for having? That gun was never found in the area, and it was never found in the Jameson family's home. I think there was also, they saw that there was like a brown bag or briefcase that was packed into the car. Never found that either. And obviously Israel Beauchamp was like, man, I really wish I could find the bag or the gun because those would be really great pieces of evidence to have because, you know. Um, I mean, it could be the case that that wasn't the murder weapon, um, but there was, there, was, there was no murder weapon found, period. Sherilyn's gun wasn't found. Another gun wasn't found. I mean, I guess it, it could have been removed from the scene, but then how did Bobby get that hole in his head? Is it even a gun wound? Um, some think that maybe they were killed execution style because of how the bodies were lined up next to each other and they were face down on the ground, right? But again, Bobby's skull is the only one that's got a hole in it. So what happened? Because it's, it's such a strange case because there are so many potential ways this disappearance could have happened because they were such a weird family. And nothing ticks all the boxes. There's stuff that ticks like some of them. But there's always just one detail that kind of just makes it crumble to pieces. 
and then you have leads that take you into investigating witchcraft and the occult. Then you have to keep tabs on frigging white supremacist. Then there's like, oh, I guess we also have to keep tabs on meth labs and drug-related incidents in Uvala. And then it's like, oh god, they have family problems too, and the dad apparently wanted to kill their whole family or something? It never ends with these crazy leads. Uh, at one point, Israel Beauchamp was like, look, man, I was having such a hard time with this that I had belittled myself to the point where I was actually listening to psychics to try to figure out what happened and what I should do next. Okay, well, then we're going to have to need to put it needs to stop checking anything then because yeah. <laughs> because <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Uh, but for me, one of the most strange things about how this all went down is how exactly did the Jameson family not get found in the initial search of the area? Because again, they had over a thousand volunteers, they had dog teams, they had UAVs, they had helicopters, they had the whole nine yards combing that area. Their remains were, like I said, 2.7 miles from the truck is where their remains were found. There is no way that the extensive search that Israel Beauchamp mentioned should not have been able to find them. So I mean, like, had, isn't a lot of trees? Isn't a lot of foliage? Sure, absolutely, but they were 2.7 miles from the truck, and you have a 1,000 people looking, you have drones, you have helicopters. There's no way... Those bodies are 2.7 miles from the truck, and that search don't find them. So, like, did someone kidnap them and and not and and not put the bodies back until afterwards because that would throw the search off? Was it what, like you said, was it just unlucky because you know it's a it's a giant forested area? Maybe that was just the one unlucky sliver that didn't get searched. I guess. I mean, okay. I mean, like, hmm, because it's the whole area, right? They had to drive a decent part point out to get to that area, because sure. right? Because like, as as Shai posted in that map, there, the truck is there, smokestack hall is there, and then family is way out there. So mm -hmm. I mean, they do have like a not an in like an unsubstantial area they need to search. Plus, like, their property alone was what was it forty miles. Oh, well, the property they were going to buy was 40 or sorry, 40 acres. 40 acres I, I don't think they actually made it to the, the spot that they were going to, like, actually look at. They never actually made it to the 40 acres of land. I don't know. I don't know. But that, that, was, that was the last bit I had on the disappearance of the Jameson family. So if you want to get into full-blown speculation, theory, whatevering, now's the time, my dude. Now's the time. Did they confirm that the woman's remains were definitely the wife? Yes. they. All of the bodies were, by forensics, they were all confirmed that it was uh, Bobby Dale, Sherilyn, and Madison. Hmm. So, the twenty-two pistol was missing also. Yep, they never found it. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, it's, it's I mean, weird. It's such a weird disappearance. There's so many wacky things about this case that, like... Almost any theory seems plausible. So, so like, I kind of have the the vibe that I kind of have the vibe that um that it, okay, it, it looks like execution, right? It sure does. It really, really does. It looks like they were put on their knees and and shot in the back of the head. Um, yes. and that, that's why I was curious about the bullet holes uh, question, which I'm sure you, oh, you, sure, you pegged sure. instantly mm -hmm. was like, okay, are there holes in the back of the head? Like, is there a, a, a crack, a break, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Only um, on Bobby Dale. Only, right. Only on Bobby Dale. And since it's only on Bobby Dale, it almost makes you wonder if that could be, be like, that it makes you wonder, like, did the wife shoot him mm -hmm. because Definitely. of that? Yep. Definitely. Um, but, but then the, what happened to the wife? Right. I, I mean, if the so, okay, and so, the kid. So Gone Girl is a story, and it was it was done. It was um in Ben Affleck starred in the movie version with um Rosamund Pike, who was very good in that film. Um, it's basically a, a, a book written about how a a wife um sets up her own death, and and, and oh. uh, like her. She, now, let me make this clear. She's crazy absolutely a <laughs> lunatic um, <Okay. laughs> but 
um, she the the husband kind of was like you know all the good all the good husband cool all like mm-hmm. sweet and suave, but then as the relationship continued, he just stopped trying. Oh, as, as happens in a lot of relationships. Yeah, it does happen. Um, but uh, so so, but she's insane, and she was like, "I'm gonna frame my husband for murder. I am going to to um make it seem like I was murdered in here, and then completely disappear." And then oh. she goes to a, um, you know, and, and then so she writes all of these journal entries about how uh, she thinks her husband's going to kill her and all these kinds of stuff. And then she burns it uh, halfway. Oh. So then the people find it and like, ooh, you burned your, et cetera. I, I don't want to get too far into it because it's quite the movie. Um, ooh, I mean, that that is basically the letter that one part of the letter that they found. Sure. Right, so so then I was like, okay, um, she writes all these things, and then she goes to go shoot Bobby or something. Mm-hmm. But then, like, I don't really know why she would. That's why I was like, are we positive that it was the wife? Because did she have like other bones or something? Mm-hmm. Forensics confirm that it was the wife. It, it could just, you, you know what? You know what kind of sucks? What? There's a solid possibility that it's it's just a bunch of meth heads that went out there and killed them. <laughs> Yeah, it, it 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 honestly it could be because like we said that area was known for having meth related problems. Um, I forget it was one of the videos you showed me, shy where they made this whole big thing where they're like, yeah, it's probably meth. Like, there, there's just so many weird things happening. Meth is a big problem in Ufala. Uh, I think shy said that that foresty area actually had a bunch of meth labs in it or something, and it very easily just could have been wrong place wrong time i uh, cult activity totally possible meth activity totally possible um i mean i mean that would give you a pretty good um uh mo for killing the kid yep because it, i it appear like the parents would never do that yep. um I, I i'd say i mean i'd say if meth had if tries like said if meth heads killed them why not steal the car money and other stuff i i'd almost say that yeah. maybe it's because they weren't there like because the jameson truck is pretty far from the family remains itself oh that's that's true it maybe they just you know they figured they saw some people they didn't know they were gonna take him for all they were worth and yeah yeah could be because they may they might have never even seen the truck because they but so the other thing about that is like how exactly did the family get that 2.7 miles out there like why were they out there because like Bobby Dale still had that real bad back injury, so ain't no way he's going on a, a 2.7 mile hike in his condition. Like, why would he? Like, he's on he's on pain meds for that. Like, ain't no way he's just like, yeah, let's stop and get out there. Why would you even leave the truck to begin with? That's, Unless so, someone so... forced you out of the truck, but there were no signs of a, a struggle. So, actually, that could, that could be a point, is that, um, yeah, like, they... I guess that that kills the um, forced out of the truck part. Yeah. Um, Unless someone carried him out there with the with Sherilyn and the kid in tow. Well, you, you know what? Could, yeah, this is this is a bit of a stretch, but this is just something I'm thinking of right now. What if it's one of those situations where it's both wife wife oh. go goes like takes them out of the car, pulls them out because she's so pissed off and everything, and then they run into meth people far away uh, I mean it's it's possible it's possible she I just mean, she dragged him out to the wrong place and I mean shit she could she could have killed the the husband and and then a bunch of people see them and enact whatever like meth head vigilante well the kid wouldn't be a part of it but meth head justice yeah I mean who knows when 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 you're hopped up on something like that ain't nothing seems the way it should so who knows? Who knows? I don't it's know. all up in the air. I I mean, I, except for them who are in the dirt. Well, they could, uh, you know. Uh, yeah, 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 that's true. They're they're gone. They're gone. They're gone. Uh, yeah, I, I, I could. I don't know. It's it is also weird that that nothing turned up from the from the UAV and the and the various police stuff. Though it yeah. is a pretty big forest, and those canopies look pretty thick. True, true. But they just had such a. One of the biggest search parties in Oklahoma's history. 
Man, Oklahoma's think. got nothing, dude. You say Oklahoma's history like it's population Ow. of Okla Oklahoma. <laughs> Four million. That's that's a that's a good chunk. That's, that's, good, that's, a, that's a good chunk. Are are you kidding me, brother? You live in San Diego. <laughs> San. Well. Hey, man. San, San Diego County has 3.3 3 mil. Uh, I mean, uh, what do you want from me, man? This doesn't even include This doesn't even include Encinitas, Carlsbad, Oceanside, San Marcos, Escondido. <laughs> you don't even go all the way to uh, to El Cajon. You f Hey, hey, man. This, this is a lot of hate. This is Jeez, man. I know. Jeez, man. You're, you're, you're right. You're right. I apologize. Uh, yeah. And hey, hey, look, look on the bright side. We're, we're sitting at just about an hour for the episode, so I was right. You, you were. I, you know, I, I gotta. Uh, I, I think this is. You know, I'm, I'm the. I, what's, what's the, uh, what's the, the BuzzFeed dudes who made their own channel? Watcher, I think, is their name. Um, uh, the, one of the, one of the episodes was from BuzzFeed. It was, it was the two guys, and they're very entertaining. I, yes, I, I like their videos quite a bit. I, I've seen a couple of them back when they worked for for BuzzFeed. They don't anymore. Uh, I for, I forget their name. I think one of them is named Ryan. I forget the other one's name, but I, I believe the other one is the me, which is the doesn't believe in anything paranormal whatsoever <laughs> yeah. guy. The the one that gets yeah yep. the 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 bo the boring one who goes into the the haunted church and says, "What's up, demons? It's your boy." <laughs> and then you start Fortnite dancing. Oh, dude, I would so go to like the most haunted Mexican <laughs> church or something down there. Just and I would, just, I would just hit the, the default dance, get the clap going. <laughs> I'd, start, I'd start flossing on the altar. <laughs> <laughs> this is a burial ground, and Bricky's just there flossing. Yeah. Oh, shit. Okay, if it's a burial ground, I might not, no, I might not do that. But, uh, um, no, but, uh, but I, I, it is weird. I mean, it seems. I mean, based on the hole in the head, I definitely think the dude was shot. Um, oh, absolutely. I, I I think Bobby Dale met his end with a bullet to the back of the skull. Did absolutely. they? Did they measure the bullet size? Like, because because a twenty two caliber is a teensy tiny little round. You know, I didn't find anything about specific measurements. Uh, I just the only thing I could find was like they uh, they said they couldn't tell because it just been so long that it was just. It was impossible to confirm it one way or another. I didn't see what any specific measurements were. I'm surprised it was though. Like like bone doesn't decompose as fast as the rest. Yeah. What 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 can I tell you? They, that's what they said. They will go through bone like butter. Like butter. Like like butter. Hell yeah, brother. Gotta, but that's gotta... that's that's the disappearance of the Jameson family. Hmm. Rather recent one. Yeah, yeah, considering the remains were found in 2013. Relative, uh, relatively bizarre one. I I'd probably say yeah. that, that you'd have to, it's, it's a tough one. You, you'd have to do some kind of, um, how do you say this? Like, you would need more forensics to really, really get it down, but you just can't. I, I'm actually yeah. really surprised the 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 bodies were so decomposed. I mean, how long had it been? Well, how long was it from the, their disappearance to finding the bodies? Uh, four years. Oh crap! Okay, four never mind. Four years. That's, that's 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 a good chunk of time. I thought it was less than that. Yeah. Yeah. They they were skeletons by the time they got to them. The bodies okay. were just skeletons at that point. Yep, that's my bad. I I a lot I, of bone I, fragments. Did not internalize. Bone soul is bone soul. I'm giving you three minutes, freak <laughs> show. You're on the wrong side of history, Spider-Man. <laughs> yeah, I look. <laughs> I like. I like that. I like the the meme version of that, where it's like, "Who made that outfit? Was your boyfriend?" Like, yes, Spider-Man. It was my boyfriend. Okay, <laughs> it's 2023. You're on the wrong side of history. <laughs> oh yeah, brother. Oh yeah. You're on the wrong side of history. Oh yeah. Spider-Man, equal rights, equal lefts. Catch this hook. <laughs> <laughs> all right all right that's that's pretty good thanks thanks Take for watching home. everybody uh it was uh, it was a very interesting one you know you know hmm. what 
next next one DK. I want another modern one. I want something recent. Oh. This is this is interesting. You with with hear the that, uh, shy? he he wants a modern one. With the okay. with the um the difference in uh in forensics and, and the missing persons, like it's interesting. I, I I'd All like. Right. I still don't. I'm not a true crime person, so I don't ever read this stuff for the most part, mm-hmm. and so I wouldn't know the details. So you you have a plethora. Okay, okay. So shy. He wants the Japanese cannibal. I think. I- Actually, I was going to go with maybe something a little bit closer to home. <laughs> Let's find a streamer who killed someone or something. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no. Uh, wasn't there a case like that just recently? Yeah, there are several, and one of them's name is Bricky. Ah!